Hello everybody, welcome to Movie for Sim channel here on YouTube. Uh, today I want to show you some news about the new released firmware for my Motion for Sim controller and the dashboard with the motion viewing system. Okay, I've released it uh, yesterday and for testing because there are a lot of changes and uh, I want to test it first, so everybody is welcome to test it. There are some news I want to show you in this video. First I have to say, if you want to try it, you have to install the new firmware and the controller and then uh, uh, using the dashboard in the new version. Uh, flashing is possible with older dashboards or the new one, it's the same, doesn't matter. Um, if you already have the new dashboard installed and want then install the firmware, you have to manually push the controller into bootloader mode because the new feature of the firmware is that there is CRC checksum uh, calculation and so the older firmware will not com understand commands from the new dashboard. Okay, if you have installed both, connect the controller to the USB and start the dashboard. And most of the config section is the same as ever. Um, first, I want to show you an option. This is an older option, but if you want to use the motion system, you have to enable these checkboxes. And I also um, prefer that you enable the high precision timer. This costs you 3-4% more CPU load, but um, makes a stable pulsing engine, makes a stable uh, processing of the motion data. Okay, these two options. And then we have here, I want to comment the SRS support. Uh, the, uh, with this option, it's possible to have uh, a connection to the controller of the SRS. But uh, normally, you do not use it with your 60 F rigs, only racing rigs will work with SRS. So, and if you enable these options, the controller boots up with a new USB device uh, called FTDE, and we have the uh, the normal FTDE driver is not working with it, so we have to load an, an replacement. And if you're interested in these options, call me with a PM and I will tell you how to do. Okay, now we come to the new options. Um, we have in the firmware section tab, we have now uh, showing the firmware number here, so you can compare uh, to the firmware is updated on GitHub and for this is this button you, you can check uh, the firmware it calls the GitHub and uh, compares the firmware numbers and if there is a new uh, version available it will download this version and copy the download string in the in the file text box here, so you can directly flash to the controller. Okay, this is new option. And then we have a new tab here called source. In this tab you find uh, patches for new games supported by the motion viewing system. And uh, for dirt you have to uh, insert some new scripts, XML files. It will be done by these functions also for DCS. So it's easy for you to first install these changes to the games or simulations. So next I want to explain that um, we have some new features in the motion system. And in this system, which is fully automatic, connecting to the game you are running 
and loading the activated profile of the handling of the system I will coming back in a, in a later video showing how to set up a profile from scratch and explaining something more about this system. Here I want to only uh, show the new options available uh, in this version. Um, first I have to explain that if you check you have um, in the rig section of the, of the config page you are set up your rig and um, the motion viewing system is using profiles for each game and several profiles you can uh, create for each game several ones and also all profiles are rig specific so if you have a linear system then there is a own profile as for the rotating actuators or for an SFX type or PT actuators type rig or just a custom rig yes um, for each rig you select here you uh, will have own profiles and in the motion system you can't work only with the profile you have the rig for actually loaded to the controller so that there could not be the wrong profile working on the wrong rig or the right profile on the wrong rig okay so you only could change uh, the profiles or edit the profiles you are you are having for games and your profiles you have made for this game and you can't edit another profile if it's loaded or this happens when a game actually is running sending data uh, the game will here select it automatic and you can't edit another profile of another game so to exchange data of your profiles I have a new button here this opens a window for import export uh, your profiles you can select them and then or check all I will only do three now here for this demo and then you click on export and we are writing to this to the XML file here and replace it okay so closes and your files are exported and you can send them to me or to other one using it okay if you want to import this file um, oh, what I forgot to mention is here you have also the rig filters therefore I explained that uh, the profiles are made for different rigs yes so and if you change this I do mainly have only for rotating actuators profiles uh, because I own a rotating actuator rig so on your four games you have the filter and so you can first select between the different profiles okay then if you want to import some uh, profiles from an XML file you select this file open it and select your files you want to import and then hit the button and the profiles will be input and if you compare in this list now we have profile 11 and 12 which we had imported lastly yes and the stars here in the end uh, were added if the name exists okay so this is one of the new features um, here you can see the auto tune option um, this is not working already it's disabled but I work on it so that you have uh, when you start a, a new profile uh, you can use the auto tune to get basic gain for your further setups okay then we have new option uh, of uh, the belt effects here and the OpenXR motion compensation I want to show you. Okay, the belt effects uh, is um, 
bound to the ACTO order number 7 of the controller. If you have a belt, you have to connect to this port and uh, configure it in the in the actuators tab so that you add your 7 actuators and uh, mark as belt maybe out of home and have here the retreat and the back moving pulses for release of the belt. So, um, okay, the other is uh, the same like all the others. You can have here a lot of filters if you like. Maybe you don't need the crop and uh, only single amount is needed and the gain maybe. So, okay, here you can, with the boost, you can modify the gain value and with this move, the value of the amount. And that's what is what I, I like that you that uh, the beginners have it easy to modify the filters. So was my thinking of um, designing this system. Uh, under the text box of the filter string, we have these four numerics where you can enter the part or the gaining of the. Uh, of the forces which will have impact onto the belt. Um, if you enter one, this is 100% of surge, 100% of heave, 100% of roll and of pitch. And the surge and the heave are only working in uh, one direction into the belt. Yes, if you have a braking maneuver in your car, you will press into the belt and this is the positive direction and only this takes effect to the belt forces. If the search is similar, and um, if the search is for braking and heat is for lifting force, uh, in pitch and roll, or rotations and uh, it works otherwise if you have a pitch uh, in both directions will have uh, influencing the forces for the belt and so only the absolute amount will have uh, effect on the belt. So okay these uh, four forces which are not the filter forces from uh, the approved ones on the original Forces which coming from the from the game or simulation will combine here with these factors. You can uh, strengthen it or or reducing the port 60%, and then after that it's combined. It will filter it with the string and send to actuator seven. Yes, you can enable disable this and. Uh, I could not test it in a reality how it feels with a belt because I do not own a belt actually. Maybe I will construct one next time, but that's the other thing. Okay, uh, coming to the OpenX motion compensation, uh, that's a feature you know from from SRS or from Flappity Mover. Uh, if you enable it, the data from the motion rig will be sent to the memory managed file of OpenXR motion compensation and then it's filtered with a low pass filter because um, the controller also have a low pass filter activated on the data before sending to the motors and so we can come uh, we, can, we can equal the signals to the same time because uh, everything is running at two microsecond milliseconds. Um, this I tested, it works okay. I'm not so satisfied with my rig and the geometry to setting it up. Uh, so I mostly use uh, the hand trackers. But it works in the same way like Move does. Um, and you can test it if you like. Okay. Um, that's the new features of the new dashboard. Test it, have fun, and report uh, to the comments here on YouTube or to our GitHub channel. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.